a quick audio check and make sure it's coming through okay. Test, test. Test, test. Good. Um, this should say Bransley. What does that say? Oh, I gotta change that. This doesn't automatically pick it up. There we go. Alright, um, let's get a coding game window going up here. If you're uh, new to coding game, you can find me on here as our Dallas. Feel free to add me as a friend. I'll try and add you back. And then we'll show up in one another's leaderboard. I am already in progress playing this game. Made some changes uh, yesterday that pretty much messed up my bot and now it does horribly. Uh, but we'll try and fix that today. Uh, let's see, there's a leaderboard here where I can see people I follow. Uh, and I was doing better than this, but now I'm like the worst in the league here. I'm not sure what this number is. Yeah, but as of last night, I really messed things up. So we gotta, we gotta fix that. And try and get us out of this league uh, today. That was better than the boss. We'll be promoted to silver. So that's what we're going for. Um... Send out another quick tweet. Getting started working on my coding game bot in Brown's League with C Sharp on twitch.tv Wack R Dallas. Come by and say hello. There we go. That'll work. Uh, da, 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 da. Tweet that. And we're good. All right, so Phil Snowfrog uh, might join me today. I didn't. Uh, I didn't check with him to see if we were doing that again. Um, but if he is, then that'll be great, and he can help me out. I have been using Visual Studio uh, for this. Let me get that started up again. And so there is a useful tool. I'll send a link to for anyone that wants to do this in C sharp and doesn't want it all to be in one giant file. Uh, this coding game compactor is a nice tool uh, that you could run. And I'll send the uh, GitHub link in just a second. But here's mine running, which it's not working. I'm oh, sorry to have it running somewhere. Uh, there it is. All right, let me close that. And now it's running again. All right. So this will go and take all your files in uh, multiple subfolders in your solution or project and put them all into one window here that you can copy paste into Code and Game. All right, and then I did already have Visual Studio running, that's why. All right, let me close this. Let me get the right windows going here. So here is the one that I wanted to run. Let's try that again. There it is. All right, so there's my code. And then actual Visual Studio is here. Good. Okay, so uh, let's just make sure I've got everything running. My issue has been that whatever change I made yesterday, I started timing out my bot. And so that's obviously not doing good things to my score. So we can regen this. And looks like I need just those three namespaces. Copy all that. I've been not overriding the namespaces here because I think there's one of these that isn't in that list. So I'm just grabbing everything here and then going down to where the player starts, which is here. Overwrite that. And let's try see where we're at with playing my code against the uh, the boss bot. All right, so 
My first four actions are learn spells. My fifth action times me out. It's what I've been seeing. So our Dallas was disqualified. Um, and the other bot learned one more spell. So they're learning five spells. I'm only trying to learn four. I might need to match that. But the worrisome part is that here's my logic for learning spells. And that all works fine. That's pretty simple. It's not unit tested. Uh, or in Visual Studio. But after that, then I use my default spell strategy uh, and my recipe builder to try and build out the, the recipes for the different uh, orders. And I added this break statement here because I, I've started changing my strategy for how to choose which order to build of the five options here. Um, and I said I was just going to grab the first one because it's got a bonus of plus three on it anyway, so I figured maybe that was a good strategy to go for. And that meant I didn't have to really figure out all the recipes for all the other ones. I could just do the first one. Um, so I did a break after the first one, hoping that that would speed things up and I wouldn't time out. Unfortunately, I'm still timing out, so that didn't even help. So let's get rid of that. Um... Here's how I was doing it. Let's let's go back to what I was doing here, because I think this was actually even better than what I had before. So recipes. Oh yeah, I need these. There we go. All right. So everything looks good. No red now. Let's see what that does. And if this is timing out also, which I think it will. Then we just have to go in and start looking at what's going on. Yeah. So what did I change that's causing this to happen? I need some way of knowing how much time it's taken for me to do these things. So let's go look at how we can log out some output somewhere. Um, my default spell strategy basically says to calculate the shortfall of uh, a, my inventory and the potion. And this is to get the next step. So I have to do this for every single step of every single recipe of every single potion. Um, and so that could be a lot. Uh, I wonder if there's a way for me to do that more efficiently. The shortfall constructor doesn't really do a whole lot. It just does a little bit of math here. Um, and I could log that I was creating that somewhere. I wonder if I have a chance, even if I'm disqualified, to put a count somehow uh, on there. So I would want that count to reset with each step, and that would be easy enough. If I had a static counter, am I going to have... It's not multi-threaded. So if I just had like a public static... Uh, Invocation counter, we'll just do int counter equals zero, and it's static, anything can hit it, so every time we come in here, we'll just say counter plus plus as a way to see if this thing's getting called way more times than I think. Uh, maybe? I don't want to, I don't want to dump it to the console too many times, so but shortfall is public. Um, and while we're at it, let's try recipe builder as well. We'll see if this, this works. Public static int counter on new as well. And increment that here. And this is probably a, a dumb way of doing this, but I'm just going to give it a shot and see if it bites me. Um, and what the heck, how many times are we creating a recipe to, maybe we'll want it there. Alright, so then the question is, how easy is it for me to dump this out? So, uh, we'll build this, come back to my copy script, regenerate it, and grab all this back to my web page and paste it and 
now I could say, how many steps am I doing here before I get to this? So here, uh, print counts of invocations. And this is console dot error, error, right line, uh, shortfall. that and that works uh, what's the other one recipe builder recipe I've already forgotten which other one I did was it recipe builder yeah Okay, that's all good. And we can just set those all to zero now here. All right, so my goal here is just to see if I'm doing some crazy amount of work on on those things. So let's see if, if we actually get the output that I want gonna be zeros the first few times. Zero, 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 zero. And then we time out and we get what? It's not gonna get there. All right. So recipe, recipe, recipe. I get four recipes figured out and then it crashes here before I get to the last recipe. All right, so let's put my break back in here. Let's just do one recipe see what we get. How many steps does it take to do one recipe? Disqualified. Didn't even get there. That's weird. I have clearly screwed this up. Let's see. This used to be the order by, let's just do it by price. Be a little simpler. And recipe not too string. It's not even getting to that. So something in default spell strategy is just taking way too long. I think I screwed this up with how I was dealing with the inventory and the spells. So let's go, let's go see if we can track that down and maybe write some tests for it. So in here, I used to take in the state inside the build recipe for section and I move that up into the constructor and set it here. Um, now spell state is telling me it's not even used. Which is interesting. So where is that being used? Shortfall is not being used. So I'm creating a shortfall for no reason because my strategy which I created is going to do that work instead. So if I get rid of this unused shortfall and get rid of this unused spell state. Um, and the inventory and spell state here aren't even being used. So what is being used? I don't think I need any of this. Um, so I pass in the strategy and it does all the work. The game state is not used, is it? No. Because I 
just use it to populate that. And I don't need any of that. Alright, so when I moved all the stuff into a strategy, I just stopped needing it here. So that's that's interesting. Alright, so let's look at that strategy. So in the strategy, this used to take the state inside the method call, and I moved it to take it inside the constructor. And so the challenge will be if I'm creating this thing in the right places. Because there's two way to think about this. There's two inventories that we need to follow. There's the inventory of the actual game right now, and then there's the inventory within the recipe as it adds steps and changes the state of the inventory. And it needs to track that second one uh, as a copy. And if it doesn't, if I pass in the real inventory, then these things are all going to get messed up. And so I think this is where my problem is. I think when I pass in that default spell strategy, I think I'm not copying it. I'm passing in the actual game state inventory, which is shared by all these things. And that's going to be really bad. So. When I pass you in an inventory, you want to take that and make a copy of it here. And likewise, the spell state needs to be copied. Copy to. Mm. The spell state's just a list of spells. Um, I was doing that work in Recipe Builder that we were just looking at here. So I just need it to be that again. So I need to take that and put it in my default spell strategy. You don't have a game state though. You only have a list of spells. Um, that's all right. Maybe I can take spell state. There. All right, so now we're doing copies again, which is good. Uh, let's go back to our recipe builder and finish cleaning this up. We don't need that. Don't need this. So I was doing this late at night without tests, and that's what happens. All right. So now we got to fix this thing because you no longer need a game state. You just need a strategy. All right. Okay. So. Let's see if our tests that we do have actually pass. And we're good. All right, so let's, uh, let's do that copy paste dance again. So come over here, regenerate and grab all my code. I am still curious about those counters. Let's see what those do for me. Paste in the code and run it. until I fix this. Anything else? I think that's it. Should be the only place I reference the recipe builder. All right, now let's see if we can do something better. No, well, that's, uh, that's not good. Still no different, all right. I'm sure I fixed some things with that, but I must still be missing something. And there's no way to debug into it from, from here to see what it's doing. So, right, so when I come into this default spell strategy, I get that spell strategy. I pass that same instance into the recipe builder, which is what I expect. And it builds a recipe for one order. We loop through. We're going to get a new instance of spell strategy, a new instance of recipe builder. So that should all be fine. And if these are copies 
of the actual game state. They shouldn't step on each other. And we're gonna spit out the recipe for each one of these, which I don't even think we get to. Right, we get the inventory printed out and that's it. So the very first iteration of this dies and takes too long, um, which is not, not good. So, default spell strategy tries to get these steps. It looks at spell state. Each one of these steps is only called once. Where's recipe builder? Recipe builder has a loop here takes the same spell strategy over and over again and says get next step, get next step. And after each next step it adds that to the recipe and then breaks as long as there is a next step that's not null. So hopefully I have a next step that returns null otherwise this thing is gonna have an infinite loop. But I've got 11 passing tests so it's definitely not always an infinite loop. This used to work. Okay, when we get a potion, we're gonna create a new shortfall with our recipe inventory, which is a copy, and that potion. That's gonna tell us where we don't have things in our inventory that we need. So if we need tier three components, we're gonna try and get tier three components. So let's go jump and see what that does. So getting tier three components is gonna say look at the spell state where we're going to get something from delta 3 order it by this delta total which is the total of all the things we would get and take the first one then create a new shortfall I wonder if these shortfall instances are what are going to chew up all my time We take recipe inventory and the spell. And if we still have some shortfall, then we assume that we need to get tier two. Why does that make sense? Well, because I know from a tier two I can produce a tier three, is why. Because I have a spell for that. But this doesn't take into account any new spells I might have learned. <clears throat> so I need to I need to work on that at some point. But that doesn't explain why we're not returning at all. And this all used to work. Alright, let's see if we can get a test that looks like our code here. So if we have several orders, where do orders come from? Orders are just a bunch of potions. If we loop through several orders here and we create spell strategies for each one why is that going to take so much time all right so i need a test that basically calculates recipes for a list of orders So let's do that. Let's create a new test. It's 
X units, so it's gotta be fact. Alright, so here's my new list of recipe. And I need some game state. And I don't need console. So to get game state stuff, I would create it like this. And I think I've got code for that already over here. So get game state. There we go. So we just want those two things. So I can create a recipe builder with the game state. That's fine. That's for here. This doesn't take into account a spell. Oh, there's the default spell strategy. Okay. Right. All right. That's fine. So I don't really need this at the moment. I do need get game state. So just say var game state equals get game state with all that stuff which I need to figure out and orders is just something else I need to have so in here I don't have orders yet but I do have potions and inventory Yeah, I don't think I'm going to use auto fixture for for this test. I think I'm going to just new it all up. So our game state needs uh, inventory, etc., etc. So inventory is pretty easy. Our inventory equals new inventory, and I really just want that to be three zero 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 because that's what it is in the game when you start, right? And then that goes into there. Now I need a list of potions to create. So P0 equals new potion. And let's just grab one from the game. So potions to brew. 0, 0, minus 2, minus 2. Like that. So we want that. all you need? Oh, you need an ID. Uh, 57. There we go. You're a potion. Um, let's create five of these. And I don't care if they're the same as what's in the game. I just care that they're unique. Hey, Ezwan, thanks for the raid, man. Uh, I am just trying to figure out why my bot is timing out, and so I'm going to write some more tests for it. Let's call this orders. Who'd you bring along with you? Did you come in? Were you doing the, uh, the challenge as well? Are you in uh, Bronze League, or what league are you up to? So my potions, add them to that list. Pass that into my game state. There's orders. And I need a list of spells. Anybody? Nobody wants to chat with me? Alright. List of spells. I've got that over here too. Hey, how's it going? Um, but let's just do what we did with the with the potions. So we'll come over here. Let's put this in its own file at this point. And create a list of spells. So var 
We have spell, and spells have ID, and then what's this one? Give us two zero 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 true. We'll just say we've got the starting four spells, and I probably have already. Most of the IDs. I probably have some helper already that shows me how to create these, but we'll just do it by hand here. Hope you have a good day, good luck. Thank you, you too. Right now my bot is totally broken, so I'm hoping to at least fix that. Alright, so there's my default spells. Let's just start with that for now. Alright, game state gets the spells. What else does it need? Learn spells. Uh, I don't care about that. Let's pass it a new list. Alright. And this should be a lowercase game state. Everything compiles. But this, this I can debug. Um, so the question is, how long does this take? Um, and my timer, my uh, unit test will give me a timer for it. So let's just do some kind of an assertion. Assert, uh, actually, recipes dot should have count of four, five. We got five potions. I should have five recipes. All right. So now I got some assertion here. Let's run this and see what it does. If it has an infinite loop, then we know we've got a problem. Great recipes for order. Eight milliseconds. Right, this took no time at all. So now that was assuming that those spells were the spells. So let's see what happens when I add some of these. Minus five, zero, three, zero, for instance. Because I think maybe that's what's throwing me is those new spells I'm adding. Um, so I add another one of these. Four equal new spell. Number five. Minus five zero three zero. What does that do? Anything? Seven milliseconds. Still nothing. Okay. So what is taking up the time? Um, well, it would help if I added that spell to my list, wouldn't it? Let's try that one more time. Eight milliseconds. Okay, it's no big deal. What's another new spell I got? Um, minus two, two. All right. Minus five, six, minus two, two. And it'll be S5. We'll run the test. Eight milliseconds, seven milliseconds. All right. Doesn't seem to be the problem. Hey, Fasani. How's it going? I am trying to figure out why my bot is timing out. And when I run it here, we say replay with same conditions. What it does is it learns a few spells which is what's going on right here. This says, if I have fewer than eight spells, learn them. And so that's my first four moves. And then my fifth move, it should bring me into here. And it should say, use this strategy, build up a recipe for each order, for each potion, print out that recipe, and add it to my list. And then we're gonna do other stuff. And this right here, times out. I got 50 milliseconds for that to happen. And this console error line right there, we never get it, right? We just die right here. So I'm trying to figure out what is going on here that is timing out. I 
And I think I could add some more console logging here just to figure out where I'm at. So let's try that. Because doing the unit test thing is so far not found what I want. So let's say we are calculating recipes for orders. And then let's say that we are going to also calculate recipe for order order.id I wish you didn't have to add a dollar sign to get support for interpolated strings. They should just be the default. Alright, so let's see what that does. Let's play stop it. Replay in same conditions. Alright, so first few steps I shouldn't even get there but now there it is so we say we're calculating for orders we're calculating recipe for the first order and it dies so alright you have any closure there that might affect the performance well I just wrote a test to do this exact work and it takes seven milliseconds my game rules if you scroll down to the very bottom they have these constraints they say your response time per turn is less than 50 milliseconds. I can't imagine that this work I'm doing up here is taking, you know, 49 milliseconds and that that last 7 milliseconds that this takes is taking me over the edge. So, what is it? Um, and if it is one of these steps, is it the spell strategy or is it the recipe builder? Or is it the build recipe for? I think it has to be build recipe for. So let's just verify that. We'll come down here and say this about to build recipe. And try that. About to build recipe for boom doesn't work okay and then after that there's a console write line so it's obviously build recipe for fail so if we go look at that let's go find recipe builder build recipe for a potion and create a new recipe for a potion what does that do uh, it just increments a counter and assigns a potion so we go look at recipe builder and next thing we're going to do is take our spell strategy and get next spell step and this is in a loop um, so this is obviously suspect um, next step so let's put in something let's take this line here and put something in choose spell strategy get next spell step so that's here and get next spell step we need to put something in here let's just see how many times we do this console.error build that and we'll copy paste it back into my other system so regenerate you have any closure there all right there's all my stuff replay same conditions we should get more output It should just be chewing on 57 a whole bunch of times, I'm guessing. Yeah, all right. So, get next spell step for 57, just infinite loops, it looks like. So, 57 is this one, which is pretty simple, right? It just wants two orange and two yellow. There's no reason why I must thing shouldn't be able to do that. It used to be able to do that. So something has broken it. Um, well, let's, let's go 
find some tests for this. So this build recipe four used to be where all this work happened. Now it's inside of the default spell strategy. But these tests all still pass. So let's create a new default spell strategy, get next spell step. Let's simulate those conditions. Um, which I think I can do pretty well with just taking this class and copying these bits and creating a new one called default spell strategy get next spell step or get next step if it's all I need there there all right so default spell strategy is is getting next spell step that's interesting um so and it needs a recipe inventory and a spell state um which it keeps its own copy of all right so in here when I create a thing, let's see, it doesn't return a recipe, it should return a step, I think. I just want to make sure it returns the right step. So in here, there's my thing. Get next step returns uh, correct step. Now I think I can turn this into a theory with a bunch of different types of inputs pretty easily. But let's pull this into its own file. Default spell strategy, get next step. It says for some inventory, for a potion, given some game state, which I'm not even sure I need. I don't need a recipe builder. Instead, I need a var strategy equals new default spell strategy, which now takes in the inventory and the list of spells, which is game state dot spells. And then I can say my step equals strategy dot get next spell step for the potion. All right, now let's create that potion specifically. And to create a specific potion, we're gonna do something like this instead. So we come over here and we'll say, you look like that. Um, and let's pick the one that's vexing us. So we want zero, zero, minus two, no. Yeah, zero, zero, minus two, minus two. Um, here, here, minus two, minus two. All right, and then likewise, our inventory, I think we want to be a little different too. So we'll grab this and replace it with this. And starting inventory, we have three things. All right. And then lastly, we want our list of spells. So recipe builder, if we have our standard set of spells, that's these standard spells here. And this is, how do I get all the standard spells here? Except those standard spells are not in my other uh, thing, I'll just copy them over. So, cause they don't really belong where they are right now anyway. Um, that's not what I want. I want this spot right here. So our spells are there. And that sets the game state to that, which is fine. Okay, then we need those standard spells to come over from here. Eventually those would go in a set of helpers or utils or something, but for now, we'll just copy paste them over here. 
put them with the rest of our test helpers. And we've got a standard set of spells. All right, so what should it do? Um, step dot should be what? Um, probably a cast something. And this is of type step, which is probably a cast step. And so I wanted to cast some ID. Let's say a dot two command. That's an easy one. So step dot two command dot should dot be cast whatever. Okay. Um, these standard spells don't give me IDs, do they? Yeah, so I don't know what their IDs are going to be, but I'll figure it out. So let's run this, and it should fail. And it does. And it says, I wanted this, but you gave me 150. That's fine, but I don't know which IDs I have. So don't expect any smart comment. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, no worries. I'm trying to just figure out why my, my bot is timing out. When I run it, you'll see the issue, uh, which is that this while loop in here keeps on grabbing this step. And maybe I should write down what that step is. Because in here, it says I'm trying to get this step. Let's pull this out of here. And let's say what step I got. That's probably smarter. Uh, var next step equals this. And we'll say next step for this potion is... Uh, next step dot to command. Let's try that. Because if it's giving me the same step over and over and over again, that'll tell me something. Surly Dev never knows what's going on. Apparently I'm a really good teacher. <laughs> Alright, so I really just want to see what's happening in this while loop, because it seems like it's just an infinite loop when we get to this step. And so I'm trying to figure out what's going on here with my unit test and because I'm OCD uh, or that's not right because I'm uh, the one where you don't have any attention ADD I'm uh, I'm also trying to do this at the same time so let's see if if we can do that console right line let's regenerate this let's grab all of this let's run our thing one more time so I'll come over here and come over here and we'll paste that in and we'll replay. And let's see what step we're actually getting here. CDO, it's like OCD, but the letters are in the right order. As they should be. All right, so what, what did we get? We said that our steps are to get 57. I've got all these things here. 80 would... About to build a recipe for 57, that's this guy. To get 57, it thinks the first thing I should do is cast 90. And 90 is that one. But 90 says, I'm gonna give you four blue and one green at a cost of one orange. I don't have any orange, so why do I think I can cast that? So that's just wrong. Um, yeah, so there's no no way that that should be my first cast. All right, so clearly I have a, an actual bug. And because of that bug, my thing just says, try 90, try 80, rest. Try 90, try 80, rest. 90, 80, rest. 90, 80, rest. That looks pretty repetitive until we run out of time. All right, so why would I pick that spell? Um, in my strategy, what I needed 
what I needed to do was I needed tier three, right? It should see a shortfall of tier three from my inventory. Um, Cause tier three is the yellow. It's the last one, zero, one, two, three. And it's a negative two and my inventory is three, zero, zero, zero. So I have nothing, right? So if I look at this uh, get next step, this is, this is here. This delta applies to this and tells me I have a shortfall that says I need tier three components. So in this strategy, I should be calculating a shortfall and it should say, I don't have enough of count three. So I'm gonna go into get tier three and get tier three has some logic in it that I recently changed and probably added a bug to that says, find me any spell where the delta three is greater than zero, which means it'll give me more delta three. So in this case, Action ID 90 has a delta three of zero. So shouldn't even have found that one. Um, give me the first one of those. And it's not first or default. It's like, give me the first one. And then I'm gonna try and calculate this where if I were to apply this spell to my recipe, what would happen? Would I, would I, have, would I be able to cast the spell? That's what this is supposed to tell me. So basically, if, um, if I don't have the components for the spell, then this should be you know, not zero, and it should say, hey, go get tier two. So it shouldn't have... It must have come in here first, because it needs tier three. And then it must have called into tier two um, and gone on from there. So let's get rid of this order by descending. I wonder what that'll do. Because that's going to grab the, the weird new spells that I'm learning. Let me think. Well, let's just build this all on a test. Let's do that. I just need that one spell that it, that it tried to use. So the one spell it tried to use is 90, which is 4, 1, minus 1, 0. So we're going to add that to my default strategy here. Spell. Bar spell 4 equals new spell. So ID 4, 1, Minus one zero. Castable true. Alright, so that's spell four. We'll add spell four here. And then let's step into this thing. So we'll break point right here and let's see what the heck this thing does. Since you guys don't know what's going on. Thanks for the follow, narrow four. It's been an hour and I still don't have any code that works. Um, all right, so let's step in here. And what I'm thinking should happen is we should hit this shortfall. And the shortfall for this recipe, for this potion, where's our potion? My potion is minus two, minus two. Is that the one I'm going for here? Yeah, that's 57, minus two, minus two. Yeah. Okay, so to get that potion, my shortfall says I am short on these last two components, tier two and tier three. And my total is minus four short. That's my, my delta. All right, so do I need count three? Yes, I do. So when I come in here, it's gonna say, go get that. So let's go in there. So we're gonna look at our spells and we're gonna pick a spell and the spell we pick is the right one, all right? It's the one that's gonna convert from a delta two to a delta three which I don't have. So when I step over to this, this should tell me that my shortfall is, hey, you need a number two in order to cast this spell. Okay, fine. So I should come in here and it should say, go get me in tier two. Tier two should come through here and say, hey, what spell is this? 
and that spell is a standard spell that says given a tier one I can give you a tier two and come over that now it's shortfall says well you don't have a tier one component either so go get a tier one all right tier one our spell is probably going to be that new weird one yes so now our tier one spell uh, is different in that it needs things that aren't just a lower tier so it will give me tier four it will give me tier one but it wants tier two and I can't just assume that if it needs something that it's going to be a tier zero that used to be true in the previous league it's not true now uh, I really need to go and get whatever the heck it needs right with potentially an infinite loop here because if I say go get Delta 2 or go get tier 2 it's gonna wind up right back here so how do I how do I follow this out um, yeah this this hard-coded logic is just not doing it for me I need a better search algorithm uh, and one that doesn't end up in an infinite loop when it goes to try and find me Delta 2 components while it's already looking for Delta 1 components but that's definitely the issue uh, here so hmm if I don't go for that component like how do I detect that loop I would like to be able to cast this spell because it's a really efficient spell, right? It takes only one Delta two and it gives me all of this stuff. Um, I feel like I could try and detect if I've already hit the same spell before, then abort that tree. Um, let me think. Hang on one sec. All right, so I already knew that this this structure here of, of getting these different tiers was not gonna work well for me. Uh, and the part that I changed, the part that I knew was gonna be an issue was this hard coding right here, where it said, if, if there's any shortfall at all, it must be that you need tier zero stuff, go, go fetch that. So I need a more flexible thing where for a given spell, if I don't have the things I need, how do I go get them? Um, given all of the spells I have available to me, is there a path that lets me get what I need? And how do I avoid that infinite loop? Um, I just can't think of a good algorithm for this right now. All right, let's start at the bottom. Right, if I need tier zero components, I know that I have a spell that will give me tier zero components. And I may have more than one thing that will give me tier zero components. Like in the game currently, this is really hard to see. Uh, let me back it up. In the game currently, you know, I could get to right here. No, that takes away this one. This one gives me tier zero components right here, uh, but it has a cost of tier two components. And my get tier zero doesn't even take that into account. All right, so what is, uh, I can't read your chat there, it's too small, there we go. Cascading will always up in some endless loop, getting all of them at once as a list. Yeah, so the logic, the, the higher level logic is we're looking at a potion, right? And so for a given potion, I can figure out my shortfall. I showed you that. And then it's a question of, okay, how do I overcome that shortfall given the set of spells that I have? Uh, and there's always a solution because the basic spells let you add tier zero for free uh, or convert any tier zero up to a one, up to and then from there to a two and from there to a three. The rub is that these new spells that come into play are, are all kinds of wonky stuff, 
right? So there's always a solution because you can always fall back to your um, your basic spells that you definitely know you can get you where you need to go. But there might be a more efficient uh, new spell that you could use that suddenly lets you get there faster. And if I don't take into account the new spells, I always lose because the other bot grabs these new powerful spells and then uses them to, to be faster than me. So I have to be able to figure out how to use these, these newer spells. Um, and like, uh, which one was it that I was trying to do? 90? Yeah, like being able to get five components for a cost of one slightly more expensive component, that, that could be you know worth quite a bit somewhere in the game. Uh, but it's it's hard. So you're trying to think of what should use a rule engine pattern to figure this out and it should know the context well enough to do this and not just be trying to do one step. So you're saying that to uh, trying to pick the next spell as a single strategy here is maybe not ideal and that I should have a rule that does all the work. So let's think about that for a minute. So it used to be that everything was in here before I pulled that out into a strategy because I was trying to come up with different approaches. Like I wanted to have a strategy that was my default basic strategy that worked fine in the Wood League um, and then make it smarter and have, I was going to write this shortfall spell strategy that was more flexible, right? And it didn't need uh, each one of those things, but I, could, I didn't get this to work. So I, I, you know, it's still in the code, but it's not working yet. But the idea with this one was calculate the shortfall for each spell and then go find the spells needed to get that. But I'm sure it would still run into the same infinite loop problem that we're seeing. All right, so if I don't jump out of this, I just want to build with, with rules, let's say. Um, you know, maybe my rule, like each spell is basically a rule, right? Oh, the rules, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I came up with that name just so I could give it some name to put in the Pluralsight course. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know if that's like the canonical name, but it, it works for me. So so basically these spells are rules, and the recipe is, is kind of acting as my rules engine, and it's trying to pick the appropriate rule to apply to get me to the next step in solving the problem of producing a potion. Um, and so if I'm, if I'm faced with, let's see what we would do manually. How about that? That's usually a good step. So if I wanted to brew this thing, right, and I know these spells, um, what would I do? Well, I need two orange and two yellow. What do I have that'll give me orange or yellow? Right, I guess would be the thing to look for. So this one takes three green to get two yellow. Three green I could get pretty quickly uh, because I could say flip blue to green for each one of these, right? And then take this three green and give me two yellow. Now I've, I've got half my, of what I need. Now to get to the orange, what gives me orange? Well, I can take five blue and get three orange. So how do I get five blue? Well, I could do two blue three times. That would give me up to six blue. And then cast this one to get it there, right? So if I, if I were playing this as a board game myself, I would probably start by trying to get the orange, um, I think, because I've got the inventory space available right now and I've already got three. So if I cast this one first, I'll be up to five. Then I would cast this one to give me my three orange. And then I don't have the greens yet for, for this one, so I would cast two blue and then convert to green, convert to green, and then not still not have enough. So I'd cast two blue, convert to green. Now I've got enough, get the yellows, and then cast, I think. So what rules did I use to come up with that logic? I looked at the things that would give me what I want, um, and then I figured out what I needed to give them, which is basically what I'm trying to do. And I wonder if I need to differentiate between original spells and later spells. Because I know these are safe. I know these will never loop. Whereas these ones could end up looping, perhaps. So I can always go from a, a newly learned spell 
I can always get what I need by casting original spells. Um, but I shouldn't try and go the other way around. Alright, so in here... If I'm trying to build a recipe for this potion, it's got those steps it needs. Let me add this other spell that I think we could have. Spell 88. 0 minus 3, 0, 2. So let's add this to my test. Spell 5. 0... Minus three zero two. Okay. Um, spell five. What I would like you to do is that your next step, I think, what I would do is I would conserve inventory by getting casting number seventy eight next. And so I need this get standard tier spell to be. ID 78. Just so it's consistent. All right. Okay, how about each step has some importance value, so they never call something less important. That's that's an option. That's uh, def definitely something to think about. Um, all right, let me make sure I'm just emulating what was there. All right, so I start with three things. I'm trying to get this one. Okay, so I think that the next one I want to cast is number 78. And let's run this. I'm pretty sure it won't be. Test finished. Test said uh, it's 78, but really it's 1, 2, 3. Alright, so how are you going to cast 1, 2, 3 when you don't have the components for it? That can't be the first thing you do. So there's clearly a bug there. Alright? So we look at this strategy, and we say, hey, for this potion, given these spells, do we, do we need shortfall on 3? Yes, but should I go for three first necessarily? Because I'm not, in my mind. In my mind, I'm saying I need orange and yellow, which takes me to these two spells right away that give me orange or give me yellow. And then I'm saying which one of those things that gives me the most of orange or the most of yellow, which one requires the most? And that's this one here, this 86. So, how do I code that? And this one's neat, because this one's like, gives you all kinds of stuff for just one orange. Um, so it's like, as soon as I start building up these oranges, then I can start using the orange for other things. There's an abstraction or something here that I'm missing. I can't just run down this route here because it doesn't work. I really need more of like a, a breadth search. Um, and I know I can use like a Monte Carlo simulation for this, but I, I'm really not good at that. So I'd have to do a bunch of uh, logic to try and figure out how to even do that. So given that I have shortfalls on two things, I could collect all the spells that give me either of those things, right? 
So, um, instead of just saying, get me a tier three thing, I could say, get me spells that give me tier three or tier two. So how would I get spells that give me something for any of the shortfalls that I have? So this would be like a potential spell list. Um, Give me components I need. All right, so that would be um, var potential spells is new list of spells. That's going to come from the spell state category. And I only want to add them if they aren't already there. Like, I don't want to add them twice necessarily. Well, maybe. Yeah, no, I don't want to add them twice. Um, so if, if we're here, if we have a shortfall on three, then we want to say potential spells dot add spell state dot where S dot castable, I have to be able to cast it, and S dot delta three is greater than zero. I can do an add range, right? Okay, so then How do I avoid duplicates? Because now I'm going to do the same thing for count two, except you're going to want delta two. Um, and somehow I want to say that you're not in potential spells. So then do that twice more. So count one, it's delta one, and then count zero, delta zero. All right, so when that's all finished, now I've got a list of potential spells that could help. Um, how do I pick? Well, I could go through each one of those potential spells and see which ones can I cast. And if any of them can help, then I can just pick one, right? Um, pick the first one and go from there. We could try that as a simple strategy. So now that I know all spells that might be useful to me, pick the first pick the first one. Um, if potential spells dot any, then we will, let's see, this returns null. Potential spells dot any create this and adjust state. Potential spells. Let's let's see. Um, well, I haven't yet determined if I've got what I need to cast it, so I've got to figure out the shortfall to see if I have what I need to cast. So now, for every potential spell, 
I've got to check its shortfall against inventory. Um, so many different lists and sublists here. I guess I can just find the first one that I could cast. That's kind of a dumb way to do it, but. Because this is what I need, is this shortfall for each one of these spells. I almost want that shortfall to be with the potential spell list. Instead of this being a list of spells, it should be a list of spells and shortfalls um, that I could create as they're going into this list. I need like a, a tuple. I if I could do that. Can I do a tuple of spell comma shortfall? There. And then when I go to add, I would add Spell state dot where this and then just do a dot select on that and is this crazy? Right, right. I do that dot select there. Oh, why did you break? Oh, because you're not the right thing. Um, I need these in there. Uh, dot any. This is a spell kind of shortfall. When I have a tuple, this is a tuple type. How do I get to the spell part of it? The second part of that tuple. So if I take a tuple in a lambda, Right here. SP comma SH. That's my tuple. Parameter. any on a list of tuples. That's not helpful.
There you're working with spell state. Uh, no need for the tuple. Potential. Oh, you're right. That is the spells. Fine. So that's the potential spell. So SP. But here, S is a tuple. No, S is a spell. That's all spells. Alright, what is the error here? Potential spells is a list of spell kind of shortfall. Right, that's here. So potential spells dot any. SP used to be a spell, but now it's a spell kind of shortfall. So I'm trying to see where I don't already have that spell in here to prevent duplication. I almost want to just create my own actual data type for this. So we could check for dupes and I could just do an add and ignore it if it's already in there. Um, which is probably the way to go. My tuple game is not that good. Any, any give s comma x. Why x? You talking about x? I really don't care about the uh, other parameter. So I'd like to be able to pass it as a discard, um, but probably I need to create the tuple first. I haven't even gotten to the part where I select out the tuple though, so that's the challenge. I don't have the tuple yet because it's going to be in the select clause, so that's why this isn't going to work. Um, I really only want to say any where the, the S part is the same. Hmm. That doesn't work. I tried that already. can't use S there anyway. That's going to be SP. Right. And then I could say SP equal S. Right, but that totally doesn't work. Yeah, I'm just not going to worry about it if it's already there. I'll just add it twice. It doesn't hurt anything. So we just want the dot select here. So we go there. We say delta is greater than that. We say dot select that and then call it a day. Right? So then here, same deal. Get rid of that. Paste that. Good enough. And one more time with feeling. Paste that in there. I'd like for it to be du deduplicated at some point, but it's not really important. All right, so now we have a shortfall in there with it. Um, so we can detect which ones are castable, like right now. So var castable spells equal potential spells dot where uh, hmm. I really want the shortfall. So I need that shortfall to be zero. So this is going to be spell comma shortfall uh, shortfall dot total. Where are you? You're a string. You're an int. Why are you an int? Spell, int, why are you an int? I 
Okay. Spell shortfall. No, I can't do. Can't do that. Um, spell shortfall is. How do I pull out the one I want? Dot item item two. Okay. Dot total. No. There. A total. Cannot be applied to a method group. Item two. Oh right. I always forget. I mean total and method. That was dumb on my part. Okay, so that should give us the castable spells. That was so easy. Um, now, if there are any castable spells, and then let's just grab the first one. So var first spell equals castable spells dot first or default. Uh, if first spell is not equal to null, then create thing press step and adjust uh, first spell All right why are you not happy um yeah da, 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 first default dot item one that'll be the spell there's a better way to do that i just what's that called deconstructing a tuple into individual variables. Let's see what that is. Deconstructors with tuples. So oh, right. Okay, so I can declare it like this. I can say parentheses spell first spell comma discard equals that like that that's the right way to do it okay um, if it's not null we're gonna cast it and what would we do otherwise create a rest step I was assuming I still needed stuff So somewhere up here, if the shortfall was not there, I would just be done and I would get out of there. So we'll short circuit here and say if shortfall dot total equals zero, return null. Boom. Otherwise, do all this work. If there is a spell there. All this other stuff. Which I have in source control. Um, and otherwise we're gonna do that. Alright. Except I need those steps. Um, I need those. So I don't need those. And I don't need those, but I do need to create a rest step. All right, and I don't need this. Okay. So that returns, these are supposed to be returns. Rich run. All right, finally, we're at a point where I should be able to run tests again. And they'll probably break. And they do. Harumph. Infinite loop, maybe. Alright, that's not good. Stop. Alright, so let's look at just this one. 
This one was expected 78, but we got rest. So why would this not work? Let's uh, let's debug it. So our default spell strategy is right here. Let's let's go in there and see what's going on. I was doing so well at this uh, challenge too, and then I decided to break everything. All right, so we come in here and see what's our shortfall. We need two of those and two of those. Okay, good. So our total is not zero, so let's find some potential spells with shortfalls. So here, we're going to do this. We're going to say, give me all the spells, of which there are two, that have the ability to give me tier three components. And that is a spell that gives me a tier three, and another spell that does not give me a tier three. Oh, that's that's not another spell. All right, that's that. All right, here we go. Other other spell here that gives me a tier three. All right, so that worked. Um, good. So we'll step over that. We'll do the same thing here. Count of two with delta two, and now our potential spells collection is up to three, and we'll jump over here. And I didn't need any. Oh. Hmm. Mm hmm. There's a problem with my logic. I didn't need any of the ones or the zeros, but those other spells did, right? Uh, so this one has a shortfall. Yeah. This this one needs some threes. This one needs some twos. This one needs some twos. So here I am with no spells that I can actually do anything with. So I need to, hmm, somehow I need to chain that and not end up in an infinite loop like I was doing before. Alright, so I don't have the ability to cast any of these because they in turn need tier 2 or tier 1 components. Which I know, because I can see their shortfall. And none of them are castable. And so when I jump over this, castable spells is... Nothing. Right? And so this is going to be nothing, this is going to be nothing, this is going to say, well, just rest. Rest. Infinitely rest. It'll be fine. Um... Yeah, so the problem is that this is good enough to give me a first pass of spells, but then I need at least one more pass, and that pass needs to be, for each one of those spells, what do they need? And I don't want the second pass to include any of the spells from the first pass, because they're needed. So it's almost like I want to look at All of them, or just one of them? Like these are the three spells that I need to cast. One of them. I gotta get there now, somehow. It's like a tree. It's like, for a given shortfall, what spells do I need? That's what this is saying. This is saying, for a given shortfall, what spells will get me there? And what was killing me before when I had this logic was that there was a loop in it. So it's like, for a given shortfall, what spells will get me there that aren't already in my list of spells I'm trying to calculate? So I would eliminate loops. So at that point, if I kept my list of spells here and I pull this out into some general purpose, you know, for a given shortfall type of thing, 
And I say, here are the spells that are left, which is my spell, castable spells minus these spells that are in this potential spell list. Will that work? So this whole thing would just become, give me potential spells for a shortfall. So here, I'll get the shortfall. And this, can I extract a method on this? Bar potential spells. Visual Studio, let me extract a method on here. Let's see. Refactor. New method. That's what I want. Yeah, do that. Uh, extract method. Boom. New method. Uh, get potential spells for shortfall. Done. Now I don't need a comment. Done. Why are you purple? Is that? I don't know. Uh, yes, that's probably why. Maybe? Yeah, okay. Alright, so here's my potential spells for shortfall, but where are these spells coming from? These potential spells are coming from spell state directly, and I don't really want them to come from spell state directly. I want it to be. spell state minus whatever spells I've already pulled out. So if I get these potential spells, then I want to see which of those can I cast. And if it's not any, then I'll get another round of potential spells, see which one of those I can cast, and continue until I find something I can cast, or I rest. And it could take more than two passes. Um, so it needs to be a loop. It can't just be hard-coded. All right, so this needs to have like an exclude list. So we'll have this exclusion list here that's optional. And we'll say, here's our potential spells. Are there any that are castable? That's what this will tell us, which we could do with an any, I think, at this point. And if there aren't any that are castable, repeat this thing. So if First spell's not null, then go ahead and pick one. Um, castable spells. Where this should show? Okay, so this tells me I could convert that to an any. So, alright, so if potential spells dot any. Um, spell, comma, shortfall. Shortfall don't help me. Okay, then we're done. So we say if there aren't any like that, then we want to loop over the potential spells and get potential spells for shortfall from those. So we could say, hmm, 
this will be a new list of spells. This is just not clicking for me today. I think I'm just not writing enough uh, small little tests to see this through. Alright, so the next level of these t spells is going to be the ones that get me closer to building each one of those spells. So where the shortfall that I was applying this to was for a potion, the shortfall for these is going to be for each of those spells. So we would do a basically a for each loop, which I'll probably convert into a link statement. At some point, our spell in potential spells calculate its shortfall. Spell shortfall equals new shortfall of recipe inventory, comma, that spell. Right? And then I can get the spells that would be necessary or that would be helpful to cast it. Where are you read? Spell shortfall. New shortfall dot item one. Good. All right. So when I come through this and it says, hey, here's the spell you could cast. It will give you these tier three components, but it needs these tier one components. Well, I don't have any of those. So here's my shortfall. Um, it's going to say, hey, I need a tier one component for this and I want to get me the potential spells for that uh, and exclude the current potential spells so then I'd have another one of we'll call it dependent spells equals get potential spells for shortfall of the spell shortfall finish and the current potential spells but just the spells, not the shortfalls. So how would I do that? Dot select s dot item one. Right. Dot two list. Well, this could just be the spells right here. Potential spells. Um, dot select. I don't want the shortfalls there, do I? No. Gotta love Link. Yeah. Alright, so that I don't need. And then this is basically the same problem that I had there. Dot select that. Dot to list, which is not going to be very efficient. But it compiles. Right, there's my dependent spells. Woohoo! Okay. What do I do with that? Because um, now, for each one of those dependent spells, I gotta see if I can cast it. Right? And I may not even be done yet. So I'm, I'm having to build up these lists within lists. spells all right so if there if there aren't any that I can cast then go find these dependent spells and then if there aren't any of those that I can cast go find their dependencies and by the third iteration I should be done because there's only four component types and if I need the fourth one that most I'm gonna go look for the third one look for the second one look for the first one so I could just do this with a whole bunch of nesting but that would be ugly as sin um, but what do I do here because I almost want this castable spells logic again in there after I build up all the dependent spells so 
I need a list of dependent spells here. So I have potential spells, and now I have potential dependent spells. Um, they're like tier one dependencies. And this just becomes now dependent spells dot add range on that. of tuples also spell kind of shortfall like that right okay then I get a list of those things now and then we can do if there's not any of that do one more level down So visually, I feel like I've got this set of spells total, and then I've got a set that I've identified that could be needed for the potion, and then I add to that their set of dependencies and add to that their set of dependencies. Each time I go through this loop, I only want to look at the ones that are still left that I haven't um, previously checked. But I can't modify can't modify potential spells in the middle of this loop because I'm using it right here. So I need a copy of potential spells to use inside the loop that isn't the main one. And then I want to modify the main one as I go through here and add these to it. Maybe. Thoughts from the uh, from the peanut gallery. It's probably a simpler way to do this, or a more functional way to do this. The thing I don't like about tuples is that they, they're kind of like a, a hack for where you really want a class. What I want is a class that has the state of the spells that are not yet checked uh, for a given component that I want to try and create. And so if I were to create a type that represented that and gave it properties of those two things, I suppose, or maybe a whole a whole collection of them. Um, then I could have methods on that. It would be thanks. <laughs> Just listening to the soothing sounds of me struggling here to to solve this problem. Yeah, so I would rather have a an, a real type here than a tuple. Cause I'm really not a big fan of tuples. Um, and if I had a real type then potentially I could pass in state to it, have it do its thing, and return back some result, uh, which could be a new type if needed, instead of having this, this if logic. Let me just see if I can write out what I'm trying to do. So, for a potion, find all the spells that give me components I need for the potion. All right, now, if I can cast one of those spells, cast it, otherwise, find all the spells that give me 
the components I need for each or any of those spells. Okay. Now that gives me a new list. Um, do not include in this list any of the spells from the first iteration. Okay, now if I can cast one of those, cast it. Otherwise, repeat uh, until we run out of spells. Now we should find a spell that we can cast because we know that the the first spell um, doesn't have any cost at all. Right? It just it costs nothing, gives you two things. So we should always be able to get to a point where we can cast something, uh, or we just have to rest. Right? So the trick is this part. Don't include the ones that we've already done, because that's what's killing me in the current algorithm is that it's looping back to other components. So if I have, let's say, six spells, and this thing generates me a list of three castable spells, or three potential spells, none of which are castable, it means there's only three spells left. Um, unfortunately, when I go through and say, what do I need? Uh, it's not going to find one I can cast on the first try because the next one it's going to find is, is one that will give me let's say tier 2 given tier 1 and I don't have any tier 1 either so it's it's still going to fail so I need to get to the third iteration where it's going to actually find the spell that it can cast um, so how do I do that so I, I can calculate the shortfall for something and then I can find the spells, and I do that for the first step just fine. But I want to be able to repeat that, and I need to keep somewhere the state of the spells I've already checked. And if I just pass in that as this exclude list, then that can work, right? But as I go through each one of those, I'm going to be creating a new list of spells that I haven't yet checked on. Maybe I just need a, a new type that says whether I've checked its dependencies. Like a flag on the spell. Or I'm doing it the wrong way and I should just start by what can I cast. What if I do that? What if I start from anything I can cast and does any of it lead somewhere worthwhile but that seems backwards wasting my life playing lol that would be a code smell what would be a code smell Adding a state into spell to keep track. Yeah, no, I was thinking I would create a new type that had a spell and the state. No, no worries. I'm not sure what I'm doing either. So you can find out as I do. Um, all right, so so here I find all the spells that give me the components for a potion. And so I've got, if I can cast one of those spells, cast it. So what I'm finding is I get found three spells can't cast any. That's where I'm at. Okay. Otherwise, find all the spells give me any of those. Okay. That's going to get me in here. And give me all those. And at this point, I could do another check and say, can I cast any of these? Um, and it's going to be something like this if statement. And if not, we'll go one level deeper, right? So we'll take the dependent spells, dot any, where there's no shortfall. 
Great. And it says, if I can't find any of those, then we should go one more level deep and find dependent dependent spells and basically do this again. So this is clearly something that could be in a function since it's repeating itself here. Um, but I haven't figured out how to keep the state of it if I do that. And also when I do, the dependent dependent spells need to keep track of all the other spells that have currently been checked to see if they will work. And that's where I was thinking that other data structure would help. Because it could just have a boolean for whether or not it, it could be used. Um, so when I have this spell state and it's made up of just a dumb list of spells, what if it was a list of spell comma bowl to say if I had checked it? Right? Is that, is that stupid? Or do I just create a new type? I think I'll create a type and see what that looks like. Uh, we'll even create it as an internal type here. So say public class uh, hmm, evaluated spell or spell uh, evaluation which has public spell spell and it has public bool evaluated right and when we start in here we'll say we're going to get a list of spell evaluation and spell state equals that spell state dot select and then new spell evaluation spell equal s dot copy like that okay so now I've got a bunch of spell evaluations and everywhere I'm going after spell state down here it's going to be spell state dot spell or spell state dot where s dot spell dot castable also all right so now spell in spell state spell dot spell all right I really didn't like all these though did it this is giving me now is I can mark all the ones I've evaluated. Okay, so if we get in here, we say here's our potential spells. Boom. And for each spell, before we go find dependent spells, and rather than doing this exclude list, which I never actually implemented, I don't think. Rather than doing the exclude list, I can just say, hey, I've evaluated all these potential spells. So right here, so for each bar spell in spell state. Uh, if spell dot 
spell equal or if it's contained in. Dot any. Potential spells equals spell dot id spell dot spell dot id then spell dot evaluated it's true okay so then when we go into here and we go looking for spells it's going to be shortfall if shortfall, okay, potential spells, add range, spell state, where, also not evaluated. S dot evaluated. And, so not, not evaluated and. All right, so that goes here. I don't like all this duplication. I'm not sure what to do about it. All right, so now it's only going to look for things that aren't evaluated. So that takes care of the exclude list junk I was going to have to deal with. And at that point, when we get a set of potential spells, we say they're all evaluated. We see if we can cast any of them. If we can't, we're going to create a new set of spells and add them to it. So those dependent spells, do they need to be their own list? Or should we just add them? Problem is I'm iterating over the list as I'm thinking of adding to it. Um, so dependent spells go through, don't need this anymore. All right, so then dependence, add all the spells for there. Um, once we're done with that, we could just add them to potential spells though, right? So for each spell in potential spells, add dependent spells. Once we get to the end, don't worry about if we can cast those. Instead, add them to potential spells. Okay, and then this if can be a while, I think. I just don't want to get into an infinite loop. Okay, so while, while there's any of them to evaluate and this. Okay, so while there's no potential spells that are strictly castable from an inventory standpoint, and we have any that we haven't evaluated yet. So that's spell state dot any uh, where S is not evaluated. Right? So that'll break us out of the loop eventually. Okay, so then once we get out of that loop, we can check and see if any of them are castable. If there are, we'll cast the first one. So let's let's see where that gets us. I'm already past time uh, that I wanted to put into this today. I haven't even gotten to the point where I can run this thing. And it's infinite looping. 
Oh, that's frustrating. All right, so I've got to do another debug into this. Let's let's give it five more minutes. See what I can do here, and then we'll, we'll call it done for now. So in here, if we debug into this, we get in here and we step in, and we create our shortfall, and we say, "Give me a list of spells and shortfalls." There should be three of them that we say are evaluated. So our spell, where is it? Spell state, which ought to be in our watch list, has six spells and some are evaluated false and some are evaluated true, right? Okay, so then we get down to this while statement. All right, and this while statement says, of our potential spells, of which there are three, are there any that have a total shortfall of zero? No. Uh, and are there, and are there any, hmm, okay, not, not any, right, okay, so this is true. There's not any that have this, and this will also be true. There's not, uh, are there any that are not evaluated? Yes. Cool. So we, we're going to get into this. Get a new list of dependent spells. And for each spell in there, we're going to pick a shortfall. Spell shortfall. Spell shortfall says, hey, I need a tier 2 component. And so we're going to add that to there. And so dependent spells got nothing. Why is that nothing? Interesting. So for a spell shortfall of negative one, that should have gotten us a spell. Let's try this again. Step into there. Okay, so we're looking for potential spells and count three is zero, count two is minus one. So we expect to drop to there, we expect to drop into there. Find me spell state. All right, so I can look at spell state, it's right here. It's not right here, it should be right here. There it is, this dot spell state. Okay, where it's not evaluated. There's three of them here that are not evaluated. And s.spell.castable and s.spell greater than two. All right, so. And uh, s.spell.castable, still th all three. And s.spell.delta two greater than zero. So I need delta two. Empty. No results. Okay. Why? So these three spells are going to give me nothing there. Nothing there. But yes there. So this one is Castable true. Uh, not evaluate. Ooh, it is evaluated true. Oh, I know why. Uh, no, I don't know why. Where are you evaluated? You weren't in my original list. For each spell, potential spells. These IDs are all unique, right? 
That one's 246, that one's 66, 78. What are the odds that I got the same ID? 18. One, two, three. And these are the ones I added. One, two, four. All right, so the spell ID is not already in use. So why are you, why are you already evaluated? I didn't think you were one of the th ones. Oh, you are, you are, you are. Okay, I know why. Okay, that's fine. So that one was one of the original three that was evaluated. But, but I still needed its delta minus one. Okay, so that's fine. So let's go to the next one. Um, let's just put a breakpoint here. Go to the next one. That's not what I wanted. shoot yeah that's not gonna work I can't just ignore that one because it's necessary for the chain all right so here's the deal um, I've got six spells two of them I just can't cast right away but one of them is is part of the chain for the other two and so I need to find its dependencies so why is that not happening so I want to find the dependencies for, let me go back to my browser, I want to find the dependencies for, like, um, this one, 86, needs a whole bunch of type 0. So I should be able to say that its dependency is this one, right? I should be able to say, if in order to cast 86, which has a cost of five blue. I already have three blue. I need two more, so I should say I need 78. All right, that should be pretty easy. And right now, it's just not. All right, right now, when I come into this test, I say, hey, I've got this spell right here, one, two, three, that, is that even the same one? It's not the same one. This is supposed to be minus five zero three. I don't think the spell quite matches that. No, it doesn't. This is a different uh, scenario I was testing. All right, well, that's not going to help me that that's not the same. All right, I've got some other work I've got to do. I'll have to get back to this later tonight, perhaps. So let's see who else is uh, streaming Code and Game, if there's anybody yet uh, we can raid. I did not make very much success here. Uh, hey, there's this Ardalis guy. That looks like me. Going for gold. Instafluff. Let's, let's send you over to Instafluff. He's trying to get to gold. I'm still trying to get out of bronze. Uh, I think he's doing a little better than I am. So we'll pull this up and we will raid Insta already got a bunch of people and tell you all have a good weekend good luck if you're doing the coding challenge hopefully you're making more progress than i have today uh and i'll i'll see you next week thanks come on into instafluff's channel and, and say hey